Welcome to Syndicated Nightmares, where each week we take a deep dive into an episode of Freddy's Nightmares based on the A Nightmare on Elm Street film series. This week, hosts Dave and Michelle talk about Season 2, Episode 19, A Family Affair, original air date February 18th, 1990, directed by Keith Samples and written by David Braff. Description is, in this follow-up to Silence is Golden, Paul scorns his lover, Claire, making him resort to drastic measures to ensure his family never learns of their affair. Later, a guilt-ridden man who's trying to reconcile with his son learns that it's not possible to cheat death. What was Silence is Golden about? That was the one with the mime. Oh. Um, so her, so Claire, the woman that, that the guy's having an affair with in this episode, um, she was in the second part of that episode where the mime... He steals from, oh. he like breaks into this couple's house at night and steals from the safe. That's and then right. the couple got murdered that night. And yeah. it turns out he was being set up by this woman and she was really their daughter and was using him to, she was, she wanted to kill her parents and was setting it up. So it looked like he did it. That's right. That woman is Claire. Okay. Later we learn in the episode how she and Paul met so that makes more sense now. Okay. Oh, got that it. Yes. That makes sense now. Okay. Because <laughs> okay. I was like, that's a <laughs> piece of information that they should probably expand on. But okay, right. it makes sense now. All right. So yeah. we start the episode off with Paul, who looks exactly like O.J. Simpson, in my opinion. Um, which he had a, the acting career with Naked Gun. Um, so maybe they wanted yeah. O.J. Simpson and he just couldn't do it because... Who knows what he was doing in 1990, but uh, he just couldn't do it, so they got a guy who looked like him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess he is that physical type. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think we have uh, to give Freddy's Nightmares props for having an all-African-American lead cast in this episode. Yes. So good for them. It's uh, about time. Yeah. <laughs> it only and took did them. You, it's a, is this the first one? The it's, first one that has um, an African-American as a lead, and especially the entire family, um, is involved. So, yeah, it only took them almost 40, ep uh, yeah, 40 episodes to do it. So, <laughs> but, you know, they did it, so that's good. Yeah, better late than never, I guess. I guess. guess. <laughs> uh, um, did you recognize the actor who played the son, Jason? I did not, no. Oh, uh, so that is... Morris Chestnut. He was in Boys in the Hood way back when, but he's like he's he's a famous actor. He's been on a lot of TV shows. It's I feel like he's somebody who I'm like always seeing in ads for shows, but I can't oh, yeah. name any of them. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought you were gonna tell me he was in a Friday the thirteenth and it, it was a wink and a nod for him for his name to be Jason. Oh. No. No, okay. <laughs> no, he's like a legitimately famous actor, and this is his first ever acting credit. Oh, okay. Oh, well, good for him. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So uh, we open up on Paul, the dad of the family. He comes into his house, and he sees Jason, his son, in the foyer. And they are talking about how Jason has been accepted to multiple colleges on a full ride. Um because he's a all-star basketball player, and uh, he hasn't mm. he hasn't decided which college he's going to yet. He wants to weigh his options, but it seems like every college on the East Coast and West Coast want him. But he's thinking that maybe he mentions like North Carolina and UCLA and Syracuse, but he's thinking that he might want to stay close to home and stay in Springwood. Uh, and then the phone rings, and it's Claire who. <laughs> Some people might remember from <laughs> that other episode, Silence is Golden. I am not one of those um, people. <laughs> right, me neither. <laughs> um, I had to, because I, I was looking at her, the, that actress's IMDb credits, and I was like, oh, she's in another one. Um, but it says her name is Andy. So at first I was thinking like, oh, she played a completely different character and it's unrelated. And then I was reading my notes from that episode and it's the whole episode like she... We think her name's Andy, and then at the end, she reveals that she's really Claire. <laughs> um, anyway, Claire is um, Paul's mistress, and she desperately wants to see him. And he, um, you know, he's saying that he he promised her a divorce, or she tells him, you know, you promised me you'd be getting divorced. 
And then we cut to Freddie on the phone and he says, uh, Paul better cut it off right now or I will. And slashes the phone line, basically shaming Paul for, for having an affair. Yeah. Which if Freddie is shaming you for something, then you know that you messed up big time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so then we cut to, um, Paul is at Claire's apartment and they are on the floor under the blankets, just wrestling around, having a good time, and uh, promises Claire that he's going to leave his wife, Helen, as soon as Jason goes off to college because he doesn't want to break up his, his family. Um, so as soon as Jason moves out, he'll divorce Helen, and then he and Claire can be together. And that seems to satisfy her uh, since Jason's mm -hmm. going to college very soon. And his wife, Helen, sort of knows something's off, um, and he just says that he's been busy with work and that's that's why his mind is elsewhere and when he interacts with Helen he seems very happy to be with her they seem like a very happily married couple um, mm -hmm. so he whatever stories he's telling Claire as to why he no longer loves Helen or wants to be with her he isn't really you know acting like it with Helen and I, I really liked Helen like I, I I'm I don't really know who that actress is, but when I was watching it, I was like, this, she is really good. Oh. <laughs> she, she played the part really well. <laughs> but yeah, so then they're, uh, they're coming home from a game. Um, you know, Jason is this you know, basketball star, and he tells them, Jason tells his parents that he's decided to stay there and go to Springwood University. And I, I thought it was really funny the way he phrased it, because he's like, and the best news is I get to keep living here. That definitely puts a damper on Paul's plans with Claire, because obviously mm -hmm. since his son will be living under the same roof, he won't leave his wife and Claire is going to be mighty upset. And I was thinking like when Paul, so when this happens, Paul is like trying to convince him, like, are you sure you want to go to Springwood U and not a more prestigious school? But... <laughs> But I was thinking, like, also, like, all the kids in this town are getting killed in their sleep. So <laughs> <laughs> that's another reason to leave Springwood. Yeah, yeah, maybe it's a good idea to leave Springwood. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so Paul, in his effort to dissuade Jason from staying, uh, he gets really mad. And Jason is, like, upset that his dad doesn't seem to appreciate that he's willing to stay in Springwood longer for them. And then he storms off to his bedroom. Yeah. And then Paul is alone in the room and he pushes the button on the answering machine. And there's a, uh, a message from Claire. Like she left a message for Helen and she's like, you know, my name's Claire and you don't know this, but I'm sleeping with your husband. Uh, and then Paul takes the tape out. Um, then you, yeah. I got the impression someone was going to find the tape later, but nobody ever does. Mm -mm, no. <laughs> um, but, well, Paul takes the tape with him over to Claire's house, and he's furious, and he ends the relationship with Claire, but she refuses to accept it, and she's trying to, like, seduce him, but Paul's not falling for it, and Claire's like, you're, you're mine, you're all mine, you're always going to be mine, and Paul is definitely having... Uh, regrets <laughs> for having an affair with this woman then we're at springwood high school the <laughs> familiar site of the front of the school <laughs> and uh and claire is parked in her car and she's watching jason leave school and then she just drives right into jason and hits him with her car and like um, breaks his kneecap or his leg or something yeah. <laughs> he, he keeps saying my leg my leg but he's holding his kneecap so i don't know what's going on with him <laughs> well your knee is on your leg yeah i guess uh, yeah uh, nancy kerrigan can attest to that so. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it also i mean it was and then paul wakes up so it was just a dream but watching it i was like why uh, how does this benefit her how does <laughs> you know what yeah. kind of plan is this for claire <laughs> to like first of yeah, it doesn't help her at all to hurt Jason. And then also, like, it's broad daylight and all the kids are leaving school. So somebody would have seen her and be able to identify the car. Luckily, it was all a dream or else Claire's plan would have been foiled very quickly. Yeah. And uh, then we cut to the house where Helen gets a prank phone call. Um, she answers the phone and no one answers when she says hello like three or four times. 
Paul is worried that it's probably Claire. So he goes to a formal, a former client of his. I guess Paul is an attorney and a pretty good one at that. And a former client of his was maybe a hitman or something because he arranges for this guy to kill Claire. And he mentions to the client that um, he met Claire because she was also his client at one point when she was trying to be a murder rap. And mm-hmm. that was <laughs> probably for killing the, the mime and also the pawn shop owner. And silence is golden. Yeah. It's all coming back to me now. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really funny that he like goes to this guy and he's like, yeah, the guy is like, you saved me. You got me off for this crime. And, and Paul's like, okay, now, <laughs> now that I saved you from going to jail, like commit this crime for me. Commit the same exact crime that could put you in jail. <laughs> right. <laughs> so then the, the next day, um, Jason comes home from school and he seems kind of off and, um, apparently some woman was following home from school and it, it creeped him out. So Paul is pretty sure that the Claire is stalking Jason. And then, well, Paul also tells him that, tells Jason that he supports him going to Springwood University now. So He's excited about that. He and Helen are getting ready to take Jason to his basketball game. It's like the last game of the season. But all of a sudden, Paul gets an upset stomach. And I thought like some voodoo trickery was going on because like the upset stomach came out of nowhere. Um, Oh, it was it was it was faked. Oh, I thought Um, it was real. Okay. No. (laughs) Um, Because he because he's talking. He calls the hitman where the hitman calls him and they're talking and he's like, are you sure what you, are you sure you want me to do this? And Paul says, yes. And he's like, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it right now. And I'll call you back. It should be 15 to 20 minutes. So he wants to, he fakes sick so he can stay home and get that confirmation from the hitman after he's done it. I thought he was going to the game as an alibi Like, you know, I was at my son's high school basketball game, but then all of a sudden got an upset stomach and I was like, there's voodoo. (laughs) (laughs) Why my mind went directly to voodoo, I don't know. (laughs) But that's where we are in Freddy's Nightmares. (laughs) You just (laughs) expect the unexpected. (laughs) That would have made more sense for him to, to, yeah, set up an alibi for himself. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Obviously, he's not a very good attorney when it comes to defending himself, <laughs> but it's <Yes>. fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so he's he's home by himself because he, he fakes sick to stay home. And then the doorbell rings and it's Claire shows up covered in blood and dies in his arms. And then he wakes up from that and he's the phone rings and it's um, Helen is calling and she's like, where are you? You, know, you were supposed to be here. You said you'd get here before the game started and it's already halftime. Uh, and so he knows, Paul knows something's wrong because the hitman was supposed to have, have called him a while ago mm-hmm. and he tries calling the hitman and, and there's no answer. So Paul goes to Claire's house and did you notice the sculpture in the background? Oh, was it from the Fabiana episode? The interior locked later, the, the sequel oh. episode. Yeah. So oh. apparently Claire bought one of Alex's original pieces <laughs> After he died, but didn't die. And yeah, so that made a cameo. Oh, yeah. I just made that connection when you said that. But like watching the episode, I did not Mm -hmm. pick up that on that at all. It's just tucked in the background in the corner somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that that was funny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, So Paul goes to Claire's house and she isn't there. And he goes... He like goes into her bathroom or bedroom or something and he, he sees something, but I was writing in my notes. So I looked up and I just saw the wor- the look of worry on Paula's face and I don't know what happened and I figured they would revisit it, but they never did. So oh. I don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of important. Okay. He finds, he finds the hitman's dead body. Oh, I figured it was either a pool of blood or the hitman was dead. It was like one nope. of those two things. <laughs> Either way, I knew it spelled trouble for Paul. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so he's, yeah, he's freaking out and he gets home and Helen is in bed and she's upset and, you know, she's acting like a normal person would like, 
<laughs> you, you said you had to stay home. You said you were really sick and couldn't make it to the game. And then and now you might get home and you're gone and you won't tell me where you were. Mm -hmm. and, and apparently the Jason lost the game and went out to a party afterwards. So he's not home yet. They're talking about like, oh, let him stay out past curfew. It's the last party of the year and he had a bad night. So like. Let him just stay out late, which I thought that's kind of cool. If I was a parent and like I had a good kid that I could trust, I would probably do do the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because no one wants yeah. to leave early at a party. Like you're having a good time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Paul wakes up in the middle of the night and he checks for Jason, um, but he goes downstairs instead. He sees Claire is in the living room. And he's like, what are you doing here? You can't be here. And Claire is like, we're going to be together and I'm going to make it happen. So she starts screaming for Helen. Paul and Claire start wrestling around on the, on, on the stairs and that wakes up Helen. And so Helen comes to the top part of the staircase and looks down and sees Paul wrestling around with this woman. And she pulls a gun out of her nightgown and just shoots, <laughs> just <Yes>. blindly <laughs> shoots <laughs> down the staircase. And we don't know who was shot, who was killed, nothing. And then Paul wakes up. It was just a dream. And Helen is like, I'm going to go downstairs and make you some warm milk. Just just like Nancy's mom. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Aw, I wonder if there's some gin hidden somewhere. <laughs> just like Nancy's mom. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. Was that, a, was that ever a thing when you were growing up? Did you ever drink warm milk? Oh, I thought you were asking if my mom hid gin in the house. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, no to both. <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> no, I um, yeah. I did not drink warm milk. I think I tried it once because of Nancy and immediately spit it out and was like, no <laughs> amount of sleep is worth warm milk. <laughs> so, no. <laughs> That's really funny. Did you try it? Uh, I did but it wasn't not because of the movie i just as a kid it, it, just maybe a couple times but i remember my mom making something that was like she called it make believe tea and it was maybe it was milk with sugar in it something like that okay yeah did you ever <laughs> drink milk and pepsi no that sounds disgusting <laughs> <laughs> i can assure you it is it's disgusting mm -hmm. but that was like the the drink that the kids would dare you to drink, like mix milk and Pepsi together and drink it. And it is so gross. <laughs> so gross. <laughs> but yeah, so Helen is going to get warm milk and then she screams and Paul runs down and Claire is stabbing um, Helen with a knife. With a meat cleaver. It's not just yeah. a knife, it yeah. is a meat cleaver. Um, and, then, and then she also, has, uh, Claire also has a gun on her in addition to the cleaver. Mm -hmm. um, and Paul like runs and tackles her and there's some coat hooks on the wall and he slams her into the wall and her head goes into a coat hook and she dies instantly. Like cranium first into a coat. <laughs> like those coat hooks, they were just like those tiny little hook things. I don't, I'm not sure that like biology of that, like how, if that could actually if that type of hook could actually kill someone by slamming someone into it. Well, maybe this is where the whole OJ Simpson thing comes into play because he tackles her like a pro and <laughs> OJ Simpson is like what the greatest football player ever allegedly. Mm -hmm. And so maybe this part was written for OJ. That's what the scene is all about. They wanted OJ to tackle her. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then in all this chaos, Jason comes home from the party and um, there's his dad with two, de <laughs> the, you know, dead mother and dead mistress Yeah, next to each other. So, yeah. Could you imagine if I'm sure he was drinking at this party, he <laughs> comes home probably tipsy, if not fully drunk to a double homicide in his living room <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and his dad is just standing there like, well, son, <laughs> sometimes <laughs> life hands you a bunch of lemons. <laughs> like, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> It'd be funny if he was just like, oh, hell no, and just turned around and left. That would have been awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then um, it cuts to Freddie. It's 
Freddy's in front of a TV with the the rabbit ears on it, and um, it's basically like Freddy is watching what just happened on his TV, mm-hmm. and then he makes a comment about like you know poor kid, my old lady died when I was a kid too. Oh yeah, and and I turned out just fine. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but then I was thinking like, do we ever? In the whole, like the Freddy backstory, do we know how old he was when his mom died? Um, yes, because there's, I don't know how official it is, but it's on one of those Nightmare Companion sites. It's like the whole timeline of Freddy Krueger. Oh, and I guess, does the gravestone in part three have a year on it? It does, uh, well, no, no. Sister Mary Helena. It's from 1907 to 1968. So is that like Freddie was 20? Or is he... Freddie was born in September 1941. But if she died in 1968... Because there was the whole thing in part five when they're like, she allegedly committed suicide, but no body was ever found. The only tombstone that I can find is that she died in 1968. But that was from Nightmare 3. So if he was born in 41 and she died in 68, then he was not a kid when his mom died. No, he was like, was that 27? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amanda Kruger, her name in Christ, Sister Mary Helena, 1907 to 1968. Okay. So she was 61. Yeah, I guess so. Well, mm-hmm. that makes sense for like the portrayal in Oh, yeah, three. yeah, yeah, because she was kind of elderly, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, but then, <laughs> but now I'm like overthinking it. Like, <laughs> and the show's timeline, Freddy's high, the 20th high school reunion was in 1990. Yeah, so they are 10 years off on their timeline. Right. Yeah. So he graduated college in 1970. So he was born in 1952. So that he was 16. All right. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think we're, yeah. So we're putting a lot more thought into this than than the writers did. Oh, for sure. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what Freddie comes back with that his mom died and he turned out just fine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so then we start the second half of this episode and we're still with the same family with Paul, and um, he's walking through. Is he in his office or is he at home? I think he's at home. Okay. So Paul is at home and he just out of nowhere has a heart attack. Um, And he tries to call 911, but he collapses onto the floor before he can go. He can uh, get to it. We assume he died or it seems like he died. But then he wakes up in his office and there's a nurse checking his vitals. So apparently he is not dead. Um, yeah, the nurse's name is Isabel, and she says that Jason called while he was asleep, and Jason is coming home to take care of him. Um, apparently, Jason has been complete, has been gone for two years and no contact whatsoever, hasn't, hasn't seen him or really heard from him in two years. And then there's a, <laughs> in case you forget, in case the audience forgot what, you know, what we saw five minutes ago, they play a whole the <laughs> extended flashback of <laughs> literally what just happened with the with the double murder. Mm-hmm. And then we cut to Freddy uh, holding a mannequin's head, but the top of the mannequin's head is shaped like a basketball. And I I don't know what they were trying to do with all that, but yeah, it was supposed to look like he was playing basketball with a severed head. Okay, but yeah. I don't think it it would bounce the way that he hoped it would, but okay. (laughs) Why not? So now Jason is back home and he walks through the front door and he's still wearing his high school letterman's jacket, even though he's been graduated from that high school for two years. Um, Mm -hmm. He comes into the living room where Paul, his dad is, and they talk about how they've been estranged for too long and Jason wants to bury the hatchet and Paul's really excited and Jason's like, no, I want to bury the hatchet. And he pulls a hatchet out of his bag and goes to stab his dad with it. That was kind of a cool scene. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I like that one too. Um, But it turns out it was just a dream. Um, Yeah. And then Jason really does come home. Um, Isabel is 
leaving. I think she's taking care of her sister or something. But basically, like now Jason's here and he's going to take care of his father and Isabel isn't needed there as a nurse anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, So she's, you know, telling him, you know, call me if you need anything. He she says he can't go up and down the stairs much. So, you know, once he comes down in the morning, he can't go back up until he's going to bed. And it's it's set up like, oh, you know, oh, that's going to be something really pivotal in this episode. But it doesn't really matter. No, uh -uh. (laughs) no, it never really comes back. Jason comes into the living room with Paul and they kind of have um, a talk about forgiveness and how Jason shut him out for so long and the reasons why he had to do it. Um, and basically they, they both want to move forward and try to build their relationship. And then Paul notices that there are track marks on Jason's arm. And he's like, well, what are those marks from? But um, Jason's like, I don't want to talk about it. I'm going upstairs. And then when Jason goes upstairs, Paul has like a mini heart attack, but he's fine. He like takes his pills and he's fine. And then, you know, Jason is upstairs and he's unpacking and he's looking at pictures of his mom and he's really sad. And then he takes the, um, you see him take a needle out of his bag. And then the mom, Helen, uh, comes in. You know, it's a, it's clearly a, the ghost or vision of her. Mm-hmm. Um, and she, you know, finds him doing drugs and he says, you know, I do drugs because I miss you. And then he, he wakes up from that. Yeah. And it's not just a needle, like he has a needle and, and a spoon and there's like actual heroin in there. So it's, mm-hmm. it, it, they make it look like he's an active user. But then mm-hmm. later on, it kind of contradicts the storyline. Um, yeah, because they – well, I got the impression <laughs> – I don't know why he would, like, still have it and take it out. But I got the impression he was just sort of looking at it, that he didn't – when he goes upstairs, he doesn't actually do anything. Oh, okay. Well, when he goes back downstairs to talk with Paul about his drug use and Paul's cheating, he mentions that he's been clean for six months. So why he would bring it on a plane from wherever he was coming from. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I mean, I know it was pre-9-11, but they weren't that lenient at the at the airport. <laughs> yeah, and also like a recovering addict, like, you know, if you're making an effort to get clean, you don't carry it around with you. But yeah, he talks about, yeah, how he was living on the streets for a while, um, but now he's clean. And then Paul, it's a it's sort of a nice scene between father and son because he's Jason's talking about his struggles. And then Paul is, you know, was talking about how he screwed up and, you know, he cheated on I cheated on your mother. I cheated at work. Um, and then he's he says that he cheats at cards and shows it's very like instructive for the audience. Like they, <laughs> <laughs> they actually show you how you can cheat at cards. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and then Jason was like, well, I thought I could never live up to your image, but I'm, you know, not not doing drugs anymore. So they sort of have this have this long heart to heart. Mhm. And it seems like they both want to rebuild their relationship and they're looking forward to it. So Jason mm-hmm. tells him that part of the reason why Jason came back is because he was accepted at Springfield University on the basketball team. It isn't a full ride how it was going to be two years ago, but at least it's something. And he says he'll get a part-time job to pay for it. But Paul's like, no, no, I'll handle the finances. I'm just so glad that you are, are back and, you know, concentrate Mm -hmm. on basketball because that's going to take you far into life. And then, yeah. And then as soon as Jason leaves, Paul suddenly collapses at the table and he, um, has these pills that he needs to take for his heart, and he but he can't take them in time and just collapses. Um, and then he wakes up, and it's Claire is there in this like flowing black dress, and she's basically come from hell to retrieve him as her mate. Oh, like he asked where Helen is, and she's like, Oh, she's in a different place up there. Yeah, so she uh-huh. definitely hints that Helen is in heaven, and she. And Claire is here to take Paul to hell. 
Uh, and he says, you know, am I dead yet? And she's like, no, but as soon as you step out the door with me, you will be. And so he tries to, he really wants to get out of it. And so he asks her, tries to convince her to play a hand of poker with him. And he asks for like six months with his son if he wins. And she talks him down to, I'll give you an extra week alive if you win. Mm -hmm. She also tells him that like this deal is going to put her in a lot of trouble with the boss. Um, but she doesn't really say what kind of trouble. Yeah, so they play a hand of poker, and he does his cheating method that he showed before, which now, like, <laughs> from now on when I play cards, I'm going to be, like, watching <laughs> the dealer to make sure they're not doing that. Okay. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, it is a pretty effective way to cheat at poker. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I guess uh, it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, he wins. She's got three aces, but he's got a full house. And so she's like, okay, you beat me. I'll, I'll be back in seven days. Oh, so kind of like the ring. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> seven days. <laughs> mm -hmm. So he wakes up from his heart attack. And as soon as he wakes up, he hears Jason screaming for help. So he goes upstairs and he finds that Jason is dead on his bed from a heroin overdose. Mm -hmm. And then Claire comes into the bedroom and she's like, sorry, I had to take someone. You might be able to cheat at cards, but you can't cheat death. Right, which I kind of liked that ending. Oh yeah. That I like that cool. ending yeah. too. So I wonder mm -hmm. like, does Paul still get that week? Because the whole point was for him to have that week with his son. So Claire kind of like went back on negotiations I bet I, I would assume she would, would still give him the week because that would be because she's from hell and he'll like stuff. You know, he probably wants to die now. So it's like oh, worse yeah. for him to have that week. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, she's from hell and hell like suffering. So, yeah, definitely. But yeah. And then we cut to Freddy and he says drugs. Now there's a real nightmare. <laughs> I was like, since when does Freddy do public service announcements? Well, was like, there a big drug issue in the 1990s that Freddie had to jump on board? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm sure that, well, there was like the D.A.R.E. program, right? But also, it's like Freddie encourages bad behavior. Like, it's it's like if he went on there and was like, hey, kids, don't litter, or, you know. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know? Only you could stop forest fires. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, Freddie's not supposed to give, you know, morality tips yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know how did you like the episode i thought it was fun i uh, yeah i mean i was i was interested the whole time and i loved the whole you know you can't cheat death thing and i liked the um the the beginning was a little choppy but i liked you know that he sent the hitman to kill her and she killed the hitman and came there and so yeah i thought the whole thing was was kind of fun mm-hmm what did you think? Um, I'm I'm right there with you. I I think the ending, the whole like you can't cheat death, that that was really good. Um, I would think that they set up the second half pretty well with the card tricks or you know cheating at cards and everything. I think um, I would have liked this half of the episode to be longer or take up like the full episode that plot line instead of the cheating husband and in the first half but I guess they had to set up the the characters using the first half but yeah I, I liked it I would uh, definitely recommend this one all right excellent thank you for listening please join us next week as we discuss Freddy's Nightmares season 2 episode 20 dust to dust where we get cooking tips from Freddy